Hello friends, my name is Theo with Meissner Media, and today we have a very exciting video planned out. DaVinci Resolve 11 was just released today, that is the day that we are recording this tutorial, and it has a lot of really great new features, over 140 the, the little document they sent out had. A lot of great new editing features if you're into that. I mainly use Resolve as a coloring and finishing program, so those aren't going to be my favorite features kind of uh, listed in this. So first and foremost, this is a super, a lot of these are just kind of like silly quirky little things that you might not know about otherwise that I just have been wanting and I'm so glad they have now. The first is uh, a windowed mode. So you see right now I don't have any little taskbar down here. That's really annoying to me as an avid Windows user. So you can just fix that by going up to view, show windowed frame, boom, just like that. And you've got your taskbar down here and it is wonderful. The second is in the same view dialog, and that is dual monitor support. I have um, a lot of computer monitors. I'm a little bit of a monitor junkie. So being able to use some of my real estate is really great. You won't be able to see this too well in the tutorial, what's going on in the other monitors, but just know this is an amazing, amazing thing to have finally here. It's not perfect yet by any means, but they're definitely on the right track. Maybe, you know, 11.1 .1 or something. Next is just an honorable mention that it's a support of 44.1 kilohertz audio. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. But if you do, then you know like it's super nice to not have to go and, you know, convert your 44.1k, like, you know, music track to 48k before using it. Next, we're going to move over to the edit window. And here we have, in timelines, we can actually make new folders for new timelines. We can call this like, It's great. You can organize your stuff that way. So this is as much time as we're going to spend in the edit window. There are so many more edit features in here, some of which are pretty cool, but I just don't see myself using yet. Maybe I will eventually we'll make tutorials about it, but not today. Now we get into the good stuff, the color window. See, a bunch has changed now. You've got, you know, your gallery and your, your viewer switched, you know. That's pretty neat. That's not a really big feature. Huge thing. Literally two days ago, I was just getting so mad because these little yellow dots are too small. They made the yellow dots bigger. They even are big. And if you zoom way out, so you may be thinking, you know, Theo, that's, that's dumb. You know, why'd you need that? Well, I will show you, I will go over to, I was playing with some grades the other day, trying to figure out some stuff. And whenever you get into to situations like this, then you really like being able to very easily click and drag, you know, and connect stuff up. Um, one weird thing about Resolve 11 is it keeps on like screwing around the view of these nodes. It's, I've had to recenter them each time. And, you know, I've got more than, more than a couple nodes here. Um, if you've seen my two strip tutorial, then you know what I was trying to do here. I got, I got close. Anyway, back to our, timeline we're going to be using. Inside of here we have these neat camera raw-esque adjustments. They're not these camera raw features in here. There are great new ones in here. I just don't have any camera raw clips, you know, easily accessible now. But it, they did add shadows, highlights, color boost, and mid-tone saturation, which are all great controls to have. And, you know, I'm doing some projects that are being shot all in raw soon. I'm looking forward to having those to make my life a lot easier. I've been I've been wanting those controls also for a while now. But if you're using just normal ProRes clips like this timeline is, you've got these cool sort of like pseudo camera raw-ish adjustments down here, which are really nice. So you can bring, you know, your shadow detail up or down, your highlights up, uh, mid-tone detail, which is just like clarity in camera raw, which, you know, is a pretty cool little thing. The next huge workflow improvement for me is being able to have group control. So let me just get this set up for you. I'm gonna select these two clips, right click, go to create new group. I'll call this green, cause they're both kind of green clips. Oh, whoops. I might have been playing around with this a little earlier. Um, so now see, it just, this is a weird thing. I'm sure they'll come up with a patch to fix that cause that's pretty annoying. The nose is kind of like jump all over the place for some reason. But anyway, so in here, uh, these shots don't, exactly match yet let's let's go to view split screen on off go up to this guy we'll change the mode to 
neighboring clips. And now we can sort of see what's going on here a little better. We can sort of match these up a little bit. Uh, I'm wanting these to be pretty bright, so let's brighten up the gamma and lift. Not that much. Now you can see they more or less match. Then you can change from clip to group post clip. Which what that'll do is it'll allow us to grade both clips at the same time. So now I've got a match. We've got them in a good place. We can just apply one grade. We don't have to to worry about them not not matching as much. So say we want to just contrast these up. Let's you know just bring our contrast up. Oh geez, look at that. Uh, let's bring our saturation up a bit. You know, say like that. But now say this is a little bit too crunchy. We can go back to our clip, and we can. I reduce the contrast some. Oop, too much. So see, super huge, amazing workflow and improvement. I am, I'm gonna use the crap out of that. Let me tell you something. The next thing is big improvements to the scopes here. Uh, I love using the scopes, partly because they look really cool and clients are really impressed when you've got these big scopes open and probably because they actually do help out with grading a lot. So, so we've got real-time updates here. We'll see as it pops over to the next clip. Yep. So you just look at that. It has super nice. But then we also have better access to the controls here. So you can go and... So you don't want the skin tone indicator there, but you do want it zoomed up a little bit. You can also increase or decrease the brightness of the little... I can't pronounce it. But, you know, the little, little ruler type thing. And the brightness of the actual stuff in the vector scope super great and you can do that with all of them so you know show reference levels don't you can change your reference levels just very quick and easy access to all these nice controls to have so like you know if you just want to see the luminance values great another feature that i love let's bump over to our other timeline real quick is the ability to uh, really easily save out LUTs here. If you know me at all, you know that I am a LUT fiend right now. Whenever I've got these big complicated uh, looks that I want to use other places besides DaVinci Resolve, like, you know, Speed Grade or Premiere or After Effects, it's really nice to be able to have a really quick, easy way to get them from Resolve into my stock folder of LUTs. And here's how to do that. You can just go down to the little project setting gear at the bottom left hand corner of your screen. Go to Lookup Tables and go to Generate Look from Current Grade. I'll save this as 2.5 Strip Test. Just hit Generate LUT. You wait for that to go and see nothing really happens, but you can go scroll up just a little bit, click on Open LUT Folder, and you'll be able to see right here I've got 2StripTest.Cube. So now you can go ahead and use that inside of, you know, other applications that you want. Uh, if you want to know how to convert that to other formats, be sure to go uh, and check out my DaVinci Resolve 2 strip tutorial, which I will put a link up to right now, which shows you really a good way to convert LUTs from one format to another inside of After Effects. So go check that out. So that's a kind of brief overview of just a few of my favorite things in the color window that we get to look at. There's obviously a lot more going on there, like especially this color checker chart, which I will have up soon, Amazon. I, as soon as I download this and saw this, I went and bought one because, oh my goodness, it's gonna be amazing. So that's being shipped to me right now as we speak, and I'm sure I'll have a tutorial on how to use that soon, and it'll be wonderful. I'm looking very much forward to that. Next, finally, we go over to our deliver page. And here you can see, you know, huge changes again, uh, UI wise, we've got our render queue over here, as you can see all the renders if you're using big projects with lots of renders. But more importantly, over here, we've got basic, intermediate and advanced controls, which is really nice, because lots of times you don't need, you know, advanced controls with all these different, you know, render options and, and just, just crazy things going on that just slow you down because um, there are projects that I would use that on the number of those projects that I've had that I've had in my life and plan on having are pretty few. Most of the times with my workflow, I am totally fine with just basic or intermediate if I need that. Now, something I've yet to test is the improved H.264 encoding, but in the press release, it said that that was improved. 
Previously, the H.264 encoding in Resolve has been absolute unusable garbage. But if they did did make it better, um, it could be something I'm using in the future. But until then, we've just got our normal options. I like to keep it at, you know, DNX HD, frame rate 23.976, export audio. Just very simple, very easy. You can go a lot quicker. Still got all your normal uh, controls here that you would use before. And it's just a, a very nice workflow improvement. Overall, I am super satisfied with uh, the release 11 of DaVinci Resolve. I'm really looking forward to using this in some projects I've got coming up, especially with that color checker chart and with these uh, group grades. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be so nice. Once again, I've been Theo with Meesner Media. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you didn't enjoy it, give it a dislike. If you think someone else would benefit from the knowledge that I've shared here with you, be sure to share the video with your friends on your basic social platforms. If you want to follow me on my social platforms, I've got links in the description. Be sure to subscribe to Meesner Media for more videos like this. I'll put an annotation up on the screen right now. Soon on MeesnerMedia.com, I'll have downloads of some LUTs that I've design that I use a lot, some stock footage I use a lot, some stock photos, some stock audio, all sorts of stuff I'll be giving away just because you deserve it and, and you're great. So just, just remember that, 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 you're, that you're great. So without further ado, I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.